Hi everyone, welcome to my video on circle theorems. Now this is mainly for GCSE Maths, grade A star, but it also comes up in some coordinate geometry in core 1 A level as well. So let's talk about what circle theorems we've got and what they mean. Circle theorems are quite tricky because you have to actually write something down in maths, which is never ideal. On each slide, I've put the writing you need to put in green pen. So the first one, angles made at the circumference subtended from the same arc are equal. Now that's a posh way to say, if you've got an arc which is just part of your circle, part of the circumference of your circle, and you draw a line from one side and draw a line from the other side of this arc, you're going to make an angle at the circumference, okay? Let's call it X. If we draw a different line from the same arc, this green arc, and do another angle at the circumference, then guess what? It is also going to be the same angle as this one. So we can apply that as many times as we want. And every single angle that I'm going to draw on here is actually the same, which is a pretty cool part of maths, I think. Now, because I can move stuff about, let's see if that's actually looking correct. So we've got a proper circle, so it should work. The theorem just means something that always works, okay? Let's see if they're the same. Yeah. Let's see if they're the same. Well, I probably drew that one a bit dodgy. You know, I'm not even using a ruler. Yeah. Yeah. So my top tip is you can actually see from the diagram that they're the same. That is because a circle theorem means that it's always going to work. Now, your exam will have a proper circle drawn. So whenever they draw two things on like this, the two angles are going to look very, very similar. Now, I'm not saying just guess, but use it to um, help you out in picking which circle theorem you think is right. Okay, next one. The angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference subtended from the same arc. This subtended from the same arc means that we just have an arc and we draw our angles from here. We don't say draw one angle from here and then draw one angle from somewhere else because these aren't linked. It's not a circle theorem to do with that. Okay, so we've drawn our arc in red. Let's put the centre of a circle on. I know it's not going to be perfect, but you'll have to um, pretend it is. And let's see what this circle theorem means. The angle at the centre... So that means that we go from the subtended arc to the center, we make an angle, okay, is double the angle at the circumference. So if we look back at our circle theorem from before, all these angles are the same, aren't they? That I'm drawing on here, okay? So usually we think of it as like an arrowhead or Star Trek. Sign. Okay, but they don't always look like Star Trek, and I'll show you how else they can look in a second. But if it does look like a, a Star Trek sign, this angle, if we call it X, is half of the one at the centre, and the one at the centre is obviously double the one at the circumference. Now let me show you how else these shapes could look. Remember that we said we can draw from the same arc anywhere on the circumference we want, and the angle's the same? Well, let's do a different one then. Let's say uh, go over here. So you've got to be very careful that it could look like that. But always think if you see a Star Trek sign and this is the centre, then it's going to be this circle theorem that the angle at the centre is double the angle at the circumference. Okay. Next one. Now, this 
circle theorem, I think, isn't a proper circle theorem on its own because it's a result of this one. That's why I've done this arrow to say it's implied from, from the last one. So let's think what I'm on about. If we have the centre of a circle and we draw a line through the middle, that red line is the diameter. Now the angle here is a straight line of 180 degrees. So we know from before that the angle at the circumference is half of that, okay? So the angle at the circumference is going to be 90 degrees. Now, if you want, you can learn it as a separate rule that if you've got a diameter, that makes a semicircle shape. And any triangle you draw with the, one of the angles on the circumference is going to be a right angle triangle. So all these angles I'm drawing here are right angles. And you can kind of see that even though I've just drawn it roughly. They're all right angles, okay? Next one. Opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. I think this one sounds the most complicated, especially if you've never heard of cyclic quadrilateral before. All it means is that you're inside a circle and you're drawing a quadrilateral, which is a four-sided shape, with all of its corners on the circumference. So let's do one there. These can go wherever you want. One there, one there. So we join up the four points, and we're going to have a four-sided shape. So that is an example of a cyclic quadrilateral. Another example might be this. Another example might be this. Hopefully you get the idea. And you, you can also have a square that's a cyclic quadrilateral as well. Anyway, moving on to what the actual circle theorem says. It says if you look at opposite angles, definitely did not mean to move that there. Sorry about that. If you look at opposite angles, which is these two or these two, there's something special about them. They add up to 180. So if we call these A and B, a plus B makes 180. And if we call these two C and D, C plus D equals 180. Okay. Next on. A tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. A tangent is just a, any old line, straight line, but it has to do something special. It has to touch the circle just once. It can't not touch it at all, like over here. It can't cross it twice. It has to touch it just once. Okay. So if we make one of those lines, any straight line we get, we can move it to be a, a tangent. Okay. They're both tangents. Now the rule is that if we draw the radius to the tangent to the exact point where it just touches the circle, it's a radius, then the angle that's made between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees, a right angle. Okay, so that works for any tangent that you can draw on. And again, like I said, you can kind of see these, that looks like 90 degrees. So guess what? It's going to be 90 degrees. You know, when your examiner sometimes says not to scale, and he might say that this is 4, this is 5, which isn't right, you can't do that with a circle because then it wouldn't be a proper circle. So it's got to be quite accurate. Next one. I think this is the hardest one to remember, to be honest. It's the alternate segment theorem. So I'm going to show you a picture of what that means. If you take any tangent to the circle, so remember it touches it just once, and from this point here where it just touches, instead of going to the centre, we draw a triangle inside the circle, 
Okay, with its corners touching the circumference just once. Then the theorem says this angle here, this green angle, is the same as this angle here. Okay, and also this angle here is the same as this angle here. Let's do what we did before and see if that works. So let's draw the angle on, move it over to here. How accurate is my drawing? You can see, even from my dodgy little drawing, that it's quite quite close. Let's see how close I was on the other one. If I'd have used rulers and a lot of accuracy, this would be perfect, but obviously I'm just doing it freehand. But there you go, that's pretty impressive. So if this is X and this is the same angle X, this is Y. This is the same angle Y. A way to help you remember which one's which is if I highlight this one, okay, can you see it's facing that way? This one is the same as it because it's facing the same way. This one, if we draw it on, is facing that way. So it's the same as this one that's facing that way as well. But you have to recognize the right shape for it to work. The tangent line and the triangle drawn just touching it. Next one. Tangents that meet at a point are equal in length. Now this one's easier to see on a diagram. That means we take any point from around the circle, not inside the circle, outside the circle. We'll just pick this random point. From it, we draw lines that touch a circle once, okay? So that's one tangent. That's another tangent, almost. I think quite managed to touch it, but there you go, let's cheat a bit. Now, your exam would probably draw it like that. However, we don't need the extended bits from a tangent. We only need to go up to where it just touches. So let's rub off the rest. Now what this theorem says is that these two lengths here and here are exactly the same. Now remember what I said about the drawing being um, the circle being a perfect circle? That means that if I drag one length, let's do it in highlighter. If I drag this length, it should be the exact same length as that. Okay. Almost, almost bang on. Um, now this might just be part of the shape you get. You might have a center and these joined up. And in that case, you know, these are right angles. You've made a quadrilateral shape, four-sided shape. Angles in a four-sided shape add to 180. So that means as well, as an extra rule, which, which you can either work out or remember, that these two angles that I'm going to show you now, this one and this one, have to add up to 180 between them. Because here's 90, here's 90. Okay, I hope that was useful. That's the circle theorems that you need to know. Um, I did this because someone requested it. If there's any other things you want to ask me or you want me to show you, then by all means just ask and I'll try and do my best to sort that out for you. Good luck in your maths work and thank you.